Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. I think it's Tuesday here on the show. Yesterday was one of those days where, because it was Monday and we didn't do Observer Live and we didn't do the Filthy Tom show, all day I couldn't figure out what day it was. I was all, it was all weird. I thought it was like a Sunday, but it was Monday and then Raw was on and... Anyway, speaking of Filthy Tom Lawler, yesterday he was supposed to be on the show, but it was July 4th, and so he was not. And so I am delighted to announce that today, Filthy Tom Lawler will be co-hosting Wrestling Observer Live. So we're going to have to watch our language, both of us, because uh, we don't normally have to do that on our show, but I don't want to give Dom a heart attack here, so we're going to do our best here today. But Filthy Tom Lawler will be joining us uh, Mike Sempervivi will return tomorrow, and uh, we've got a lot to get into. A lot to get into with Filthy Tom. Not the least of which, we normally review SmackDown, and uh, probably not going to do a full SmackDown review today, but don't think I will not ask Tom about the Maximum Male Models segment on the show. We've also got Raw from last night. We have a whole bunch of, of shows coming up here. We've got uh, Dynamite coming up on Wednesday. We've got uh, Great American Bash. We've got all sorts of things, and uh, we can get into that. Tyson Fury, we've got an update on Big E, which is uh, good news and bad news, it seems. But I would say mostly good news. Bad news in the sense that he probably is not going to be back for a long time. But good news in the sense that everything seems to be Largely going well for him. We got Ric Flair's last match. We could tell you about that and so much more. A couple of plugs tonight. Brian Avidi and Granny Show. We are doing the Limerick Contest Pro Smoking Limericks. So get those in on Granny's Facebook page. Or you can email me, brian at wrestlingobserver.com. Put Limerick in the subject line. I'm not going to read it. And uh, also today, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, Landstorm. We're doing live Q&A for all of our paying top-tier Twitch homies and YouTube subscribers. We'll talk about more of this after the break. Observer Live. Filthy Tom Lawler is joining us here today. Getting right ahead to Japan, right, Tom? What's up? One week from today, I will be departing to Tokyo, Japan, where it's on I your will be... face. It's the face of a champion, my friend. <laughs> I see your screen. I see whatever pornography you're watching as we're uh, trying to do this show here. It's Emmanuel. Yeah. I'm surprised you couldn't discern that from the view. But in one week, I'll be departing to Tokyo, Japan, where I will be taking part and taking over the G1 Climax 32, Brian. Can you believe it? Years ago, when you messaged me and then called me and asked me if I wanted to be officially a part of this site, did you ever think that you'd have your first ever G1 competitor on the other end of the line? No, I never did. But you know what, Tom? You know what? I've had many I've had many uh dream scenarios involving you. Not that kind. But I want you to work the G1. I want you to face John Moxley. And not only did both of those events occur because of uh me, quite frankly. But I was there. I was there for you and John Moxley. And uh, it was worth every every second. So now I just hope that you win at least one match in the G1. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, 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 uh, and hope and pray that you win. Because, quite frankly, Tom, everyone who's in the G1 for the first time, they usually get like a, you know, six and one record or one in six or something like that. So... <laughs> Those hopefully, are two hopefully vastly you, different they are, records, they are. my friend. Well, I meant one and six, but I said six and one. But yeah, one win, six losses. But I think you only have like six matches, right? How many matches do you have? Five, six? Six. Six, yeah. So Lance it's probably, Archer, probably going to be one and six. Lance Archer, Bad Luck Fale, Jonah, Jeff Cobb, Kazuchika Okada, and... Toru Yano. Yeah. The big one. You you might go two and four. Because I, I can see you beating Yano, and I can see you beating Bad Luck Fale. I can assure you 
that Toriyano will not defeat me like he did Dick Togo via incarceration. Mm. I will take him out. All yeah, right. Well, well, listen, we got to talk some news today here. And I want to mention Big E. Nearly four months after suffering a broken neck, Big E has shared a new update on his recovery. Tweeted on Monday that with a C1 vertebra not forming bone quite yet, the current plan is for him to get more scans at the one-year mark. So he's had at least another six months. See how things are progressing. Big E stated that the great news is he feels tremendous. Surgery is off the table as an option. Of course, he suffered a broken neck on SmackDown March 11th when he got dropped on his head by Ridge Holland. Broke his uh, C1 and C6 vertebra. Not good, but uh, will not need surgery at this point. So uh, looks like he's not going to be back for quite a while, if ever, quite frankly. I mean, yeah. we'll see. But at least he's he's living a, a normal life, pain-free, and uh, things seem to be progressing well. So all the best to old Big E, and hopefully, hopefully he does get to resume his career at some point down the road. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, in the face of... A horrible situation that in the grand scheme of things he's going to be okay uh there's a, always always injuries or you know around the same time shinjiro otani uh he was paralyzed and you know he's still in rough shape yoshihiro takiyama as well still uh, out there recovering so it's good to see biggie uh not requiring surgery and you know, hopefully he's able to get back in the ring. But, you know, first things first. And obviously his health is paramount and more important than, you know, making a comeback. But, which, Hay Hayato, how do you say this? Fujita? Hayato Fujita Jr.? Did you see him make a comeback? Do you even know who I'm speaking I of? I did not see his comeback, no. No, he, he did a comeback match last week. I believe he's coming back from brain cancer, I think. Something along those lines. I know he was in rough rough shape at one point but even he came back so you know hopefully hoping the best for Big E because he's awesome we're not going to review Smackdown here today Tom because it's a lame duck show did you watch by the way any of the Money in the Bank I did not see any of the Money in the Bank uh, but I did see Smackdown and Raw okay in well, I'll, do, I'll do Money in the Bank uh, next segment then we'll do Raw but even though we're not going to review Smackdown Tom it was the debut of Maximum Male Models. And his name is not Face, Tom. It's not Face. I just want to make sure that I get that out there first. Because you're an idiot and you don't listen to me. But I think that even though you have been humiliated, humiliated in this, this uh, debate, I think that we can both agree that Masse... Is a significantly, significant upgrade from both Mace and Face. Am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I had thought about it in the context of being better than Face, yeah, but I hadn't thought about it actually just being better than Mace. But, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I guess it is. Brian, this was a momentous occasion. Oh, yeah? You know, Maxwell Male Models is an agency based on its passion oh. and love of fashion. That will be displayed by the most viral, athletic oh, male models. The people hated this segment. Jeez, I they, wonder why. They booed this vociferously. 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 Titillatingly. Would be the word. I laughed so hard during the entire thing. I absolutely loved it because I have not had as much entertainment as I got in those few minutes of... Max Dupree and Marseille and Mansois out there trying to keep a straight face. That was one of the highlights of my year so far in the pro wrestling world. You know, what is with this this Mansour? Like, this guy, uh, he he's good. He's good. And every time they did a show in Saudi Arabia, he was super over. And all they want is... You know, these these guys that can get over all over the world so that they can, you know, whatever. And, like, dude, they never do anything with the guy. And then finally, oh, we got an idea for you. You're going to be Mansois, part of Maximum Male Models with whatever his name is, Emile Dupree. And, uh, Max Dupree. Max Dupree. And I'm just watching this like, God, dude, what a waste of talent. But I guess... 
I mean, you know, maybe they'll let's let's not let's not kid ourselves. They could do nothing with these guys. And uh, next week they're going to do their uh, their tennis, their 2022 tennis outfits or whatever. Yes. And then the week after that, they're going to have to do some other stupid outfit. And then like the week after that, Vince is just going to drop the whole thing because I think it sucks. And that's that's the way I see this going. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I, I, I don't see this one having legs, so to speak. Well, I mean, it's funny that you say you don't think it has legs, because if you're paying attention, then you would know that it does have legs. It has perfectly proportioned, striated calf muscles, impressive hamstrings. And ladies and gentlemen, let us not forget the ankle. Massey. The ankle. <laughs> That's what he said. His fucking, his silly ankle. <laughs> I quit, Dom. I'm out of here. I can't do this. Are you going to join? I can't do it anymore. You're going to join Maximum Male Models? No. Brian. I need to get a new job. I, when I tell you that the first time I went to wrestling school, this was the gimmick I had, I'm not making that up. A Maximum Male Model? Yes. Models Incorporated. Dude. That's my... Can we go to break already? I hate this show. I hate my life. I might be back after the break. Otherwise, Semper Vivi and Tom are taking over. We'll <laughs> are talk you to you next out time. Over there? Wrestling Observer Live. Quitting because of the maximum male models, you dorks. Quitting because I can't control my language anymore. I need to maybe, just. I need to move to satellite radio. Maybe you need a gimmick change, Brian. You could be. Brian freaking Alvarez. Well, obviously not, Tom. If I could, if I could settle well. <laughs> for freaking, we wouldn't have a problem here on this show. I I enjoyed the segment. It was ridiculous, but I but it's not going to last. There, I, there's no hope for these guys. Do you guys understand? This is not going to last. Don't get your hopes up for it. And man, <laughs> poor poor Max Dupree was was struggling to get through this verbiage. I mean. He was he was the most preposterous verbiage was written for this guy, and he's struggling to try to get through it. He's tripping over his words. These idiots are out there posing on the ramp. It was absolutely preposterous. And what's the end game? Just bad television, like comically bad television. The end game is to titillate the juices of our guilty pleasures, my friend. That doesn't even that line doesn't even make sense. What was Vince thinking when he wrote that line? That line doesn't even make sense, and it's like their catchphrase. They're going to titillate the... What? The juices of our guilty pleasures. That doesn't make any sense. It is nonsensical, that line. I believe I've heard something similar in Emmanuel, actually. Well, you probably past. have, but they probably said it right. We also had another debut, Brian. Yeah, what's that? Somebody in the aisleway was wearing a chop and roll express <laughs> That's shirt. That's true. Who was that? <laughs> well, we you you didn't even notice it till halfway through the show because you were like, oh, my God, during the Viking Warriors entrance. I saw it in the very first segment of the show. Oh, no, no, no. Brian, I didn't notice it until you sent me the photo. What? I said, let me know when you get to the Viking Warriors entrance because they are not the Viking Warriors. Oh, the Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders. They are the new vicious Viking Raiders. Oh, great. Yeah, it's another one. No, th I noticed from the very first segment there was a there was a bloke out there in a chop and roll express t shirt right there in the front row. Every time somebody was in the aisle, he's standing right there. We gotta find out who this guy is. So we can give him some some credit for this. For actually buying a shirt. You know, we got it shirts, everybody. F4wonline.com slash shirts. We got a bunch of cool shirts actually. But I never plug them. But there's they're they're very they're very popular, as you can tell by the shirt being front and center so anyway let's get through the rest of the news here then we'll talk about raw so uh tonight we have got the great american bash for nxt and the lineup has braun breaker cameron grimes for the nxt title toxic attraction versus cora and roxanne perez for the tag titles carmelo hayes versus grayson waller uh, trick williams versus wes lee creed brothers versus diamond mine and wendy chu versus tiffany stratton i've been told you know how this thing goes. I've been told that the title match is getting the least amount of time. You want to guess? Which title match is getting the least amount of time, Tom? 
the main title. Cameron Grimes and Braun Breaker. Yes. Because, of course, the NXT get the title. least amount of time. They're going to give more time to Toxic Attraction versus Corey Jade and Roxanne Perez. And uh, the Creed Brothers versus the Diamond Mine. And there's a uh, probably a pretty good chance that they've got some sort of angle for both of those matches. But let me tell you something. If I got Cameron Grimes, Braun Breaker, that ain't the one that's getting the least amount of time. But you know what? Not my company. Then we've got uh, Dynamite on Wednesday. And Dynamite has John Moxley, Brody King for the AEW title, which actually should be an awesome match. Listen. Yes. Brody King's awesome. Yeah. It's who I beat to win the strong title, that New Japan strong title. But now he's linked up with the House of Black. Maybe it's his time, Brian. What do you think? No. Okay. Uh, Scorpio Sky versus Wardlow in a TNT street fight, TNT championship. Thought- you think it's his time? I uh, think it's Wardlow's time. Well, I, I, I something's going to happen here. Something's going to happen. Dave totally, like, I, I asked about MJF, and he just immediately moved on to trying to figure out what the other advertised match was for the show. I thought it was a good question. Like, is MJF coming back tomorrow? It's a street fight. There's no DQs. Wardlow's fighting for the title. Is MJF going to return and screw him out of the title, or is MJF still vanished until whatever they're going to do with the guy? I guess we'll find out. Uh, Keith Lee and Swerve versus The Butcher and The Blade. And an appearance by Christian Cage and the Luchasaurus. So that's coming up on on Wednesday. You know, uh, you know it's hot around here, Tom. Probably hot where you're at too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, whenever I'm whenever I'm in whenever I'm sleeping and I get hot, I always dream about wrestling for some reason. Okay. When my body sweats, I start dreaming about wrestling. I dreamt that I had a match with Brody King. That's what I was dreaming last night. Apparently, it was pretty good, too. So it must have been a dream. Anyway, then we had the uh, pay-per-view this weekend. If you missed it, uh, we had... Hold on. Yes? Can I get back that 30 seconds of my no, life? No, of course not. What was that? that oh, you're going to talk about stalling cool story, and wasting bro. time on this show? God, how about that time that you went crazy about steak frights for about the first 15 <laughs> minutes of the show? And then the show wasn't even over. You're mispronouncing some other word. Huh? So we had Liv Morgan winning the women's Money in the Bank over Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Becky, Lacey, Raquel, and Shotzi. And uh, it was a very sloppy match. I was afraid for everyone's lives. Liv Morgan won. And uh, yesterday, Shotzi put something on Twitter about she was angry about criticism or something like that. And everyone was, like, sending it to me like it was all my fault. Dude, I never once even in the universe of suggesting that she should quit or be fired. All I said was she botched a bunch of spots, which, in fact, is what she said in the same thing that she sent out. So this is not my fault. Then she canceled all of her social media as well. She Really? Yeah, she's off Twitter oh. now. I just said she botched some spots. I never said she should yeah. be fired or should quit. <sighs> Nothing like you that. You know, I'll be honest. My experience with MMA fans was much worse than the experience I've had with wrestling fans. You know what I mean? Like I, th- I thought. No, MMA, what do you mean? I thought they were much more fickle. Well, of course they're fickle. Extreme. Like I thought. I like anything that I've encountered in wrestling is uh, <laughs> like it's half one tenth of how bad it is in MMA. I think it's probably because your money is you know. Based a lot upon whether you win or lose. Well, so. yeah, people, a, a if people are extra... betting money on you. They bet thousand dollars on you, and you lose. They're gonna be way more angry than if they watch a free show on Peacock. Well, yeah, but Shotzi's not making you know double the amount of money if she wins or loses a close match. No, whereas in a fight you are. So you also have to carry that in there, and then you get some keyboard warrior wiping snot off his face, eating a cupcake, typing on the keyboard right after in his mom's basement. Or maybe it's his attic up in Bothell. Hey, you know what, though? If everybody, if everyone just quits social media, things would be a lot better. I just want to throw that out there. Bobby Lashley beat Theory with the Hurt Lock. This is a good match. A lot of heat. People love Bobby Lashley. Last two days, Lashley's been the most over guy in all of WWE. And uh, he's now the United States champion, which led to an angle later. Bianca beat Carmella. It was just a short, nothing happened in Raw match. Bianca beat her clean in the middle, 
which led to Carmella beating her up and then coming out the next time. I'm going to talk about Carmella later. I'm going to put her over, Tom. Usos beat the Street Profits. And uh, this, this match, some people thought it was great. Some people were bored. I fall into the camp of thinking it was pretty great. Yes, it was a long match. Yes, there was a lot of heat. Yes, there were, you know, there was some downtime. But overall, start to finish, I thought it was great. And the Usos got the win. Uh, Montez's shoulder was up, which they really didn't play it much on Raw last night. So I presume they'll be getting a rematch at SummerSlam. Ronda Rousey beat Natty in what I thought was a, a fine match. Kind of, Kind of started to get sloppy there at the end, but overall I thought it was good. And then afterwards, Liv Morgan cashed in. And uh, she cashes in. She sprints down to the ring. She throws one kick. Ronda Rousey, who just finished a long, grueling match with Natty, puts her right in the ankle lock. And the fans are furiously booing. And uh, she manages to escape, uh, clip Ronda Rousey's bad leg, roll her up, pin her. So Liv Morgan, uh, the new SmackDown women's champion, and probably Shocker. should be, probably should be for a while. And I'm thinking she actually might be, even though our initial thought was that Ronda was going to win the title back at SummerSlam. I have this feeling that something's going to happen in that match, and maybe like a Charlotte or a Bailey, Bailey. or somebody's going to interfere, and Liv will keep the title maybe for a couple more months, and then they'll take it off of her. So I'm starting to get this feeling this because she's super over. So I think it would be foolish to take it off of her, and they have to realize that would be stupid. And then the main event was uh, the men's Money in the Bank. Adam Pierce came out, added Theory at the last second. So it was uh, Theory, Drew McIntyre, Madcap Moss, Omos, Riddle, Sami Zayn, Seth Rollins, Sheamus. A lot of dudes in this match. Omos, every time he was in, it just ground to a halt. And then every time they got rid of him, it got really good again. And finally at the end, because it's Vegas, which is Riddle's hometown, Riddle climbs up to the top of the ladder. Theory climbs up the other side. They punch each other back and forth, and uh, Riddle takes the bump off the ladder. Theory gets the briefcase. Heat! Now he's Mr. Money in the Bank, vowing to cash in at uh, SummerSlam after the Brock Lesnar versus uh, Roman Reigns, whatever that match is. Falls count anywhere, no holds barred, whatever it is. Some, last man standing. Last man standing, that's right. Which, by the way, those matches never, they never work. There's so much downtime. Like, we have to watch Lesnar lay around for nine seconds over and over again and Roman. Or you get, you get some screwy finish, like with Roman and Kevin Owens. Yeah, he puts a right forklift right. on the guy <laughs> or something like that. Plants him or something. Hey, back in a moment, we'll talk about Raw. Tom watched it. That should be exciting. Right, Tom? Woohoo! Wrestling Observer Live. Oh, up oh, there we go. All right. It was not the FCC. It was uh, producer Jared's internet died. Tom, are you going to do this review or am I? For Raw? Yeah. Well, this is your show, buddy. So you didn't take notes today? You didn't take Oh, your... I have full notes, but we don't have the time for that. <laughs> you can't get it done in 12 minutes? Absolutely not. Wow. You want to try? All right. Hey, Jimmy Smith, nowhere to be found as this show is coming in to us from San Diego, California. And we have Kevin Patrick taking his place at the helm of Raw. Is, J is Jimmy Smith out? They said Do he was on any? vacation. Ah, okay. Well, good for him. As if you that's mentioned. true. Who yeah, we'll takes see. a vacation on Monday, the 4th, on of, 4th July. of July? Ridiculous. So Lashley comes out, as you mentioned, the most over guy on the show. There's big chance of Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. And he says very little before Theory comes out. He says he's got a rematch taking place against Lashley at SummerSlam. And uh, basically jumps Lashley. Doesn't get very far. Lashley catches the briefcase, spine busters Theory, and we move on. Yeah, they are playing it up that Theory has vowed that he's going to cash in after that uh, last man standing match, and he will become the new champion. Man, if I wasn't getting ready to order SummerSlam before, that is going to certainly get me to spend my four ninety five to see that show. Let me tell you. 
But yes, Lashley's super over. We had your boys, the Mysterios, taking on the Judgment Day here in their hometown of San Diego. Rey Mysterio said he's going to teach the Judgment Day to respect the 619. And uh, I'm not quite sure if he did that because the Judgment Day beat the crap out of both Dominic and Ray through multiple commercial breaks until Damian Priest tried to cheat. He threw Finn Balor a chair. Ray Mysterio took a bump, pretended to get hit. It was the old Eddie Guerrero fake DQ win. And this homage to Eddie got over huge with the crowd. These damn cheating Guerreros, we talked about this multiple times. They're such slimy heels. But in fact, because it was San Diego, because it was an homage, an homage, must say, to uh, Rey Mysterio, it did get over huge. It was like the most, this was probably the most over I have seen a disqualification in WWE, probably since about uh, 2005. So uh, they made it work. And uh, no, no turn by a young Dominic. That's uh, probably still coming. Not even a hint. No. He was happy to celebrate this win. But you know, they do that sometimes where if they're about to do something, they, they want to really make you think they're not going to do it. So like a lot of times you'll see, you know, someone promising a cash in and then they just won't. Whereas on Money in the Bank, Liv did the big interview and she goes... I'm thinking WrestleMania is a time. I don't want to screw this up. I'm I'm just going to take some time and I'm just going to enjoy my win. And she was so good that I believed that she wasn't going to cash in. And then, of course, it was to set up her cashing in. So I think they dropped the Ms. Ray stuff because they want to surprise you when it happens, would be my guess. I could be wrong. Miz, huh? Well, we had Miz up next yeah, as Miz. he took on AJ Styles. Before, before that, they played video of Logan Paul signing with the WWE and vowing to kick the Miz's butt talks at SummerSlam. Uh, and then the Miz took on AJ Styles. Ciampa interfered. He attacked Styles, appeared to align himself with the Miz. And uh, they left Dude, this was a AJ nothing match. Styles laying. AJ, AJ beats him with a phenomenal forearm. It was a six-minute match. It was not anything special at all. All this talk about Logan Paul and Miz. They've got a big match at, at SummerSlam. Let's not protect the Miz at all. Let's just pin him in the middle of the ring. I was like, man, whatever. Who cares? It doesn't matter, but it, this this booking baffled me. It's like, why did you do this match? Why, why not let Miz beat somebody? Isn't that the point of like trying to build a guy up for a match against Logan Paul? I don't know. What happened to the local competitors they were using for a while? That well, seems to have I stopped get, a little bit I guess they had well, no huh? local pe- competitors here tonight. In San Diego? Yeah. Southern California's they got all, no wrestlers? They all signed with AEW. There's oh, none is left. That what it is? Liv Morgan came out. Are they uh, going to get she... Danny Limelight? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I still haven't gotten over when he spit in the guy's face and had a shillelagh. <laughs> Not the most intelligent maneuver. No. But, hey. Very on character, on brand for him. Uh, Bianca Belair and Liv Morgan took on Natalia and Carmella. This was set up by a Liv Morgan promo. She said she relied on the WWE Universe to lift her up when she was down, and even that she was giving them nothing to cheer for. As the new SmackDown Women's Champion, of course, she needs a challenger. This is Natalia who comes out and tries to take credit for softening up Ronda in the prior match, which... I mean, it's a true statement. Uh, She wants to face Liv. Carmella comes out. She wants them to leave because it's raw, and she wants to uh, basically run the show here as these two SmackDown competitors are holding court. The heels end up beating up Liv. Bianca Belair made the save. Adam Pearce made it a match. And we had the Raw and SmackDown Women's Champions teaming up tonight. That lived it great night. in this uh, in this segment. She's uh, she has in fact been underutilized for a long time, and the fans do recognize that. And uh, I think this could end up being one of those edge things where he won and cashed in Money in the Bank, and it was only supposed to be like a three week thing. But he got so over that he ended up being a permanent main eventer. 
So we'll see if that happens with Liv, but I thought she did a good job here. And let me say something one thing about Carmella really quick. When she did that promo and she goes, I can't believe, Natty, that you're not just going to slap Liv Morgan the way I slapped Bianca Belair last night. It really hit me that Carmella's not like a great worker at all. Even though Ed in San Antonio sent me a text about how improved she was after that match in Money in the Bank. And I was like, of all matches, that's the one you chose. But she's a good heel. Because she she delivers these heel lines in such a way that I'm like, dude, I want to see someone just like pin you in the middle of the ring and humiliate you. Not like the go away type of heat, but the actual right kind of heat where the heel says something. You're like, ah, I want to see her get hers. When she had that line about how she slapped around Bianca the night before, even though it was like a total Bianca dominant one, two, three pin in the middle of the ring. And it actually was like, how can you say that she beat you? And then I realized what a mark you are, Brian. She gotcha. So anyway, I think Carmella is a good heel. She delivers her heel lines well. But as far as in the ring, no, Ed. She's she's there at this point. Natty went for the sharpshooter to live, kicked her under the ropes, hit the oblivion, and picked up the win. So, way to heat up Natty. I don't think for... they're trying to heat up Natty. They mentioned after this match, like, she was still going to be the challenger. Well, they do this stuff all the time. I mean, Carmella's still a challenger. She got beat in the middle of the ring in, like, six minutes last night or Sunday or Saturday or whatever day it is today and then. Anyway, they had a food contest. Nobody got choked out. Tom can't do it. I wish I'm not covering that. Yeah, they had a they had a, a, a hot dog eating contest, and Otis lost, but he came in second because Tozawa ate all the hot dogs. And then this led to a match later on where, yes, he uh, he barfed. Yeah, appalling. It was hideous. Why? Why is this on my television? Because Vince thinks it's funny when people barf. Or it's not. Well, I know that. You wait. Know hold that. on. He doesn't like any sneezing. You can't sneeze, but you can barf. Well, he doesn't want you barfing in his office, but like... How do you, why do you know? You know? He likes to see stupid stuff on TV. You know, big Out guy eats hot things, dogs, barfs. What could be funnier than that? Besides virtually maximum male anything. models. Ugh. Seth Rollins and Zeke, I thought, had a good match. Am I wrong? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. Rollins at the stomp picked up the win. Riddle snuck up, RKO'd him out of nowhere. Uh, this was set up because at the barbecue party, whatever it was earlier today, there was a bunch of pandemonium, and Ezekiel squirted ketchup on Rollins' shirt. Ugh. You know, uh, when Ezekiel first showed up, and I was like, man, Elias, he played the guitar. People loved the concert. Wasn't a very good wrestler, but like the rest of the stuff was good. Now they've stripped all of that away, and he's just in there as a generic wrestler. I was like, how could this possibly get over? But you know what? Zeke is way, <laughs> way better than Elias ever was. And he's improved a lot in the ring of late. Granted, he was in it with Seth, but this Zeke, I don't even know how he managed, but he turned his career around by getting rid of everything that was over. And somehow becoming more over as just a guy, a guy's brother. It's impressive. Are we going to are we gonna get Elrod? I think we are. Is Elrod? They're strongly hinting because... that we're going to see Elrod. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Megan Moran. Well, we had Chad Gable and Otis and uh, Theory took on Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, like you mentioned. Uh, Lashley pinned Gable after a spear, and then we had Otis barfing. Only 23 hot dogs he ate. Yeah, and and somehow he only barfed one. <laughs> that was weird. Well, I mean, he's not quite the worker that our boy Joey Chestnut is, is he? Joey Chestnut, 63 dogs, hit the zigzag on a protester, yeah. took him out in the process. None of that happened here, let me tell no. you. Otis, Otis. I like this Megan gamer. Morant, by the way, when the first thing she says is, I hope Otis is feeling better soon. <laughs> now let's talk to Becky Lynch. And Becky doesn't care at all about old Otis. She's just angry. No. She's going to have a match with. Uh... 
Then we had my favorite segment of the show. I got to tackle this one. Our truth comes out dressed as Uncle Sam. And after everything that's been going on in our country over the last couple of months, man, he's begging these fans to chant USA. And, dude, I'm watching these 1993 Raws with the Lex Express Tour where the people actually are going crazy with USA chants. Man, they don't want to chant USA in 2022. He's begging for chants. It's not working. Finally, out comes Ludwig Kaiser and Gunther. And uh, the ref goes, you ready, Truth? Truth goes, no. He goes, you ready? No, I don't want this match. All right, ring the bell. It's like, what a horrible horrible person that referee is and uh, he's immediately killed absolutely brutalized by gunther destroyed in his wig and uh, that was the end of that man what a horrible guy and then main event becky lynch beat oscar in the no holds barred match i thought the first half before the commercial not good second half good what did you think uh, they went right into the weapons you know what I mean? Like, they started using trash cans and chairs immediately. This was billed as a no-holds-barred match, Brian, but I didn't see Zeus anywhere. You're an idiot. You know why they had to rush is because they could have started wrestling at 10.40 p.m., but they had seven minutes of commercials, entrances, and video packages, and then they ended up rushed. Just like we are, because I hear the music. I made a whole segment without getting in trouble. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, back in the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi returns tomorrow. Filthy Tom is here today. He's about to head Japan for the G1. Should be very exciting, Tom. Very exciting time in your life, isn't it? It absolutely is, Brian. I feel like I have a second life ahead of me. It's not many times in life that you get to start anew in some ways, and I'm walking into a new world in many ways for me, and I'm very excited to see what Japan holds. Do you have any matches before the G1? This Friday, San Francisco, I will be taking on Jacob Fatu for the West Coast Pro Championship. And then, as you mentioned, I'll be off to the G1 Climax 32. Wow. Well... We're going to be doing uh, some shows somehow with Tom during that period, but we don't know who, what, when, where, or why, or how. We know some of those, I think. The who will be Tom. The rest of it, I don't know. We're going to figure that out, so uh, be ready for a a floating schedule, as they call it, for myself and Filthy. And uh, don't forget, at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern today, it is our uh, monthly Q&A with Lance Storm. So if you want to uh, be involved with that, you have to be a subscriber to our twitch channel twitch.tv slash f4w or uh, video.f4wonline.com as well works and uh, you can ask your questions i ask lance he answers you ask follow-up questions and it's a uh, fun time go about 45 minutes today starting at uh, 2 pacific 5 eastern so uh, twitch homies and top tier youtube subscribers must be paying members join us for the q a and uh, that's that so thanks tom good luck in the g1 Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners up in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.